So, uh, let's work on hip mobility today. So, it's going to be fun. It's going to be maybe a bit challenging sometimes, some postures, some uh, transitions. But uh, as always, I'm going to give a lot of different options and you're welcome to pace yourself, to take it at your own rhythm and to take any breaks if you need to. Child's pose is always there for you. So we'll start with a bit of mindfulness as always, just finding a comfortable position. You can be lying on your back, you can be seating, whatever feels right right now. And close your eyes once you're settled. Relax the arms and the legs and the front of the hips. And relax all the muscles of the face. Take a few long breaths. And inhale through the nose and exhale through the mouth. Every exhale we release our day, we release the tension that's built up during the day. bring your awareness to your regular natural breath now. In through the nose, out through the nose. And notice the quality of your breath at the start of this practice. Also notice the quality of your mind. Is your mind rushing and jumping from one thought to the other? Or is it pretty calm already, pretty relaxed? And notice if there's a, a correlation between this and your breath. Sometimes when our mind is very active, the breath is going to be short and shallow. Whereas when we feel calm, the breath is calm. So we can try during this class to reverse engineer that and with the breath, trying to calm our mind just by slowing down the breath. Sometimes that's all it takes. Not always, but sometimes. So let's keep our attention on the breath regularly during the class, coming back to it. I know it's not always easy when you focus on the posture, on the asana, but let's try to come back to it regularly and notice what's happening. With our next inhale, we'll slowly start to raise the arms up. Or if you're lying down, slowly make your way down, up into a seating position. And with your exhale, bring your hands to your heart. Let's start with our mantra. Take a deep breath in. Oh. Shri Gurave Nama Shanti 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 Namaste Very good, open the eyes and we'll right away make our way into a standing position. So carefully come back up, move your uh, cushion to the side if you had a cushion, 
and make sure you've got your blocks near the side of your mat so that you can grab them easily if and when you need them. All right, so coming to the top of your mat in a mountain position, standing position, you can have your feet hip distance apart or bring them close together. Doesn't matter too much, just feel nice and grounded here. You can again close the eyes and pay attention to your posture for a moment. Pressing the feet down front and back, slight bend in the knees, the pelvis is in a neutral position, spine is long and reaching up, shoulders are relaxed right down and the arms are relaxed to the side of the body. The crown of the head reaches up and the chin is parallel to the floor. You're gazing straight forward and take the moment here to notice how tall you can be. We'll start with a simple, gentle sun salutation A. So with your inhale, raise the arms up, gaze up. With your exhale, bend the knees and fold over the legs. Inhale to lift the chest up halfway. Extend the spine. Exhale, plant the palms down and step back to a plank position. Knees can be up or down. Inhale to stay here and center to sternum forward. Exhale to lower your body all the way down to the mat. Inhale, slide the chest forward, shoulders back. Exhale, downward facing dog. Take your time to get there. Lift the hips and stretch the spine and the legs. First downward dog, what does your body want to do? Does it want to move? Does it want to stay still? Keep the muscles of the face relaxed. Move your hips side to side if you'd like to. With the next inhale, let's close the mat, gaze forward, bend the knees and step to the top of the mat lightly. Inhale to lift the chest up halfway, press the palms on the shins. Exhale and fold over the legs, relax the neck. Inhale, press into the feet to reach up. Exhale, relax the arms to the side. Do it second time. Inhale, arms up. Exhale and fold. Inhale, lift the chest up. Exhale, step back or jump into a plank pose and then chaturanga, body to the floor. Inhale, chest forward, shoulders back. Exhale, downward facing dog. This time from downward dog, move your left foot a little bit closer to the midline, so a little bit to the right, and slowly lift the right leg up. Leg is straight for now. And then we consciously bring the right hip over the left. So we open the right hip to the side and bend the knee. Flex the foot. So point, uh, don't point the toes, flex the foot so that you're pressing through the heel and keeping the shoulders down. We're opening the front of the right hip here. Bring your right knee as high as you can. Then straighten the leg again, move your right hip down and then right foot to the mat, just next to the left so that it's already closer to the midline and then lift the left leg up. Then open the hip to the side, stack the left hip on top of the right, bend the knee, flex the foot and press the heel away from you. back, straighten the leg, left hip down, left foot down. Look forward, bend the knees and step or walk uh, or hop to the top of the mat and lift the chest up halfway. As you exhale, fold over the legs. Inhale, arms up, gaze up. 
Exhale, arms to the side of the body. Very good. All right, third one. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, and fold. Inhale, lift the chest up. Exhale, step or jump and lower down. Inhale, chest forward, shoulders back. Exhale, hips up. Downward facing dog. Good. This time, bring bring your hip, your feet a little bit wider apart, maybe a little bit more forward. So you got a slightly more comfortable downward dog with the heels drawing closer to the mat. And let's press into the hands, press into the left foot, and slowly lift the right leg up. This time, we're not going to open the hip to the side. So make sure that your right hip is pointing down and you're sending the, left, the right foot away from you towards the back, reaching. Might not go very high, that's fine. Some of us stay here, others pulse. So slow pulses up with the right leg. And relax. Bring the right foot back down. And let's do our second side. Lift the left leg up. Make sure that your hip doesn't open to the side. We've already done that. Press into the hands, point the toes, send your hips back. And maybe we pulse here as well if we did it on the other side. Keep the neck relaxed. Shoulders are burning, that's okay. One more breath. Left foot down. Very good. Gaze forward and slowly bring yourself to the top of the mat. Lift the chest up. Feel the relief in the shoulders. <laughs> and exhale forward. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, arms to the side. All right. Let's take just two or three breaths here. You can roll the shoulders or shake the arms if you need to, or shake the legs, whatever calls for your attention. Observe your breath. Maybe your heart rate is a little bit faster. And then we'll move on. Okay. Inhale, lift the arms. Exhale and fold over the legs. Inhale, lift the chest up. And this time we'll slide the left foot back into a low lunge. Bring the left knee to the mat. Good. As you inhale, bring your hands to your right thigh and come up. And we'll go for double 90. So with the 90 degree in the front of the in the front knee and in the back knee. I'm covered in fluff, sorry. So we've got our hips just above the left knee and the right ankle just under the right knee. If you need anything, in, any support under the left knee, I'm going to do that. So because I've got a very thin mat, if that's your case, you might want a bit of cushion in here. So we've got our hands to the thigh, press down. And now I'm going to get you to tuck the tailbone. So Fill up the lower back here, tuck the tailbone, engage the left glute, drawing it down. And you might already feel the stretch in the front of the left hip. We're going to press the right foot down and drag it towards the back and press the left knee down and drag it forward. All right, you feel the engagement? I hope I really do. Keep pressing the hands down. And some of us, it's enough. Others, we want to round the back a little bit to feel even more stretch in the front of the left hip. Keep breathing, keep the engagement, the feet, the glutes, the core as well. All right, beautiful. Let's release, relax, bend the front knee a little bit more. You might want to bring it a little bit more forward and now let the hips sink forward. Option to let, to lift the hands where they are or to lift the arms. Any kind of arms is fine. We're focusing more on the hips today, but you can always give yourself a shoulder and chest stretch. All right, 
beautiful. Let's bring the hands down, bring your right knee back. And from here, we'll go to uh, knees, chest, chin. So from tabletop, bring your knees already down, but bring your chest and your chin to the mat. And then slide forward into a cool bar. Relax the toes, shoulders back. Exhale to downward facing dog. Very good. Okay. As you inhale this time, bring your left foot forward and the right knee down. I'll move my cushioning to the right side. Come up. Doing the same thing on this side now. So remember, we're pressing the hands down and tucking the tailbone. We've got 90 degree in both knees. Tuck the tailbone, engage the glutes on the right side this time, lifting the pubic bone up towards the, towards the chest. Then we press the left foot down, bring it back, press the right knee down, bring it forward. Maybe you just stay here or you round the back a little bit more to increase the stretch. Keep the breath flowing, all good. Inhale, release. Let's bring our hands down and this time we step the right foot forward. Coming forward. Inhale, lift the chest up halfway. Exhale to fold. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, hands down. Beautiful. Inhale, bring your arms up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lift the chest up halfway. Exhale, bring your right knee, right foot back this time, right knee down. Good. Let's bring the hands back to your left thigh. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, I forgot to sing the hips earlier. Sing the hips. <laughs> good, we're doing it now. All good. Engage the glutes. Lift the chest, maybe lift the arms. Very good. Let's release, release the arms and step your left foot back into a downward facing dog. Moving the cushioning to the side. So downward dog option one, we can just stay here, that's fine. Option two, we come high onto the tippy toes and let the heels drop towards the right side. So toes are pointing towards the left, the heels are pointing towards the right. Stay here, keep sending the, the hips back and maybe coming a little bit lighter on the left fingertips. So you're on your left fingertips, press the fingertips down. You can see from this angle a little bit better. Press the fingertips down, send the hips back and find length in the left side body. Right hand is pressing down. We've got a little bit more weight into the legs now. Come back up as you inhale. Both hands down and then shift to the heels to the other side. Sending the hips, hips back and becoming a little bit light on the right fingertips. All of this is optional. If this doesn't work for your body, don't sweat it. Just stay in the down dog. If you need to rest, come to child's pose. All good. No stress. And one more breath. As you inhale, come back to center and we'll bring our feet forward into a squat. So lightly step to the front of the mat, turn the toes out and draw the hips down. Okay, so we're coming into Malasana. You want to have your feet as wide as you need to. 
wider is usually more accessible, narrower is more difficult. Whatever you're choosing, bring the knees away from each other, hands either in prayer or pressing the fists together. Lift the chest up, stay here for a couple of breaths. You could be sitting on a block, you could have a rolled blanket under the heels or maybe a, like a cushion like this, a little bit easier for stability if your heels don't reach the floor. Good. So option one, you stay here. Option two, we're going to bring the right shoulder down and stretch the right arm out. Trying to bring the right shoulder lower than the knee if possible. From here, we're pressing the right shoulder against the leg. We're going to turn the torso towards the left leg and press, just gently guide the left knee away from us. We're not pressing very hard, we're just encouraging the hip to open a little bit more. And as we do that, we resist with the leg. So we push the leg against the hand as well, and that um, sends the chest back a little bit. So we're pushing the hand into the leg, the leg into the hand, and it ricochets into the chest. Not a word I get to say often, ricochet. Pretty cool. Let's come back to center, inhale. Let's do the second side. Left shoulder drops down. Stretch the left arm, hand to the floor. Turn the chest to the right. Right hand to the thigh. Press the hand into the thigh, the thigh into the hand. Send your chest back, the back of the skull back, the ears back, right shoulder back. Let's come back to center, send the hands down, lift the hips and stretch the legs. Shake your bum if you want to, doing any kind of movement that releases the stretch in the body. As you next inhale, lift the chest up halfway, press the palms into the shins. As you exhale, come back into a forward fold. Inhale, lift the arms up, stretching up. Exhale, hands down. Let's bring the hands to the hips and tuck the tailbone. So just like we were doing when we were in our lunges. So we're squeezing the glutes here to lift the pubic bone up, tailbone down. And we're going to press the hips a little bit forward here. Keep the chest lifted, it's just so that we stretch the front of the hips after this very long Manasana. We're pushing the hips forward a little bit, very soft bend in the knees, no pressure in the lower back here, it's not worth it. And let's relax, good. All right, let's come back to our salutation. As you next inhale, raise the arms up. As you exhale, fold over the legs. Inhale to lift the chest up. Exhale, step the left foot back, left knee down again, in back into the double ninety. Press your right hand onto the right thigh, ninety degree forward, ninety degree back. Lift the chest up, tuck the tailbone, and again engage the feet. The right feet presses down and back, left knee presses forward and down as well. You can stay here, you can round the back, or some of us like to place the hands, interlace the hands on the back of the skulls and bring the elbows forward and parallel to each other. Let the spine around slightly. Send your ears back so your skull is pressing into the hands. There's a lot going on here.
and relax. Good, relax the arms, come up right again. Maybe move your right foot forward a little bit more and sink the hips forward. All right. We're gonna come to a lizard lunge. So bringing your hands to the inside of your right foot, you might wanna use the blocks under the hands here. We're gonna tuck the back, the back toes and lift the back knee off the mat and lift, engage the leg, engage the left leg. So avoid the tendency to just sag into the left hip here. We are lifting the inner thigh up on the left leg. Lifting the left hip so that it's in line with the right one. And we can move forward and back a few times here, giving our foot a little bit of a stretch as well. Back foot. If it's too much, you're welcome to drop the knee down. Good. Let's come back to steady, bring the left knee down. Now we're going to open the right knee out to the side and the right foot as well, right toes turned out and we can move this right leg inside and out. So internal rotation, external rotation. Make sure that you're not just moving the foot or the knee, that the entire leg is going out and in, out and in. And next time it goes out, let it be, let it go out. You can be on your hands, on your blocks, or you can be on your forearms as well. If you've got more space in the hips and it's comfortable, accessible for you, you can come down. And just breathe here for a few moments. Now, most of us will stay here. If you want more, you can pick up the back foot and grab it with your right hand. If you want more. If you've got the foot, you can either kick the foot into the hand and open the chest or make it a very intense squat stretch by lifting the bum until it reaches the heel and then from there, they just move down together. Again, that's optional, only if you're a bit of a masochist. Tug the tailbone. And then we'll release. Gently release the back foot if you've got it. Then come back up into your lunge, bring your right foot pointing forward. And now we're going to look towards the left long side of the mat, lift the back knee and walk all the way to the back of the mat. We're coming to Skandasana, bending the left leg and sitting down here. So we're going all the way to sit basically at the back of the mat. I'm gonna turn so that you can see me better. So you might be sitting on something here. If you feel like you're uh, folding back, folding back a lot, sit on something or and or keep your hands back so that you can press down and lift the chest and support yourself. All right, so we're on the inside of our left leg here. Option, let me think. Yeah, option to keep the hands in front of the chest if you've got already quite a lot of mobility in the hip or place the hands down to support yourself. We're gonna move this left knee in and out. So let it drop in, let it move up and out. And don't worry if it doesn't go very far down or very far out, just do what you can with what you've got today. It's all good. Just try to move it as much as you can today. All right, let's do one more like this. Knee back up. Good. From here, option to stay supporting yourself. Option to bring your hands forward into a forward fold. 
or to come to a side bend. So right hand on the next to the right leg and left arm comes up. Any amount is good. You can also fold while staying upright. So we're staying here a little bit longer, working into this right inner thigh. And the left hip as well, of course. All right. And slowly come back upright. And we're going to retrace our steps, going back to our lunge. So maybe you need your hands, maybe not, to come up. And come back to the front of the mat. You've got your right foot on the outside of your legs. Take your time to get there any way that works is fine. And then we'll step, uh, we'll not step back, sorry. We'll bring the left knee back down and move back into Ardha Anwanasana. So again, the blocks here for the half split, always good. So we've got our right leg forward and we're on top of the left knee, hands on the, under the shoulders, right toes pointing up. And we're gonna move our leg again here. So windshield wipe of the leg, the toes are pointing up, toes are pointing to the right. And the entire leg is moving here not just the foot you can feel that the the femur the thigh bone is moving as well into the hip socket all right let's bring it back to center and now we'll fold you lift the chest up maybe stay here or send your chest forward Beautiful. Let's come upright. Inhale. Let's bend the front foot, front knee, sorry. <laughs> Move the blocks out of the way. And let's step back into a downward facing dog. Yeah. Shake your hips, shake your legs, and notice right and left side. Do you feel a difference in both legs, both hips? Is it pretty much the same? All right, let's do our second side. Gaze forward, bring the left foot forward and right knee down. Starting with our double nineties again. Coming upright, right hip over the right knee, left ankle under the left knee, hands to the thigh, press the hands, lift the chest. All right, we tuck the tailbone, Round the back a little bit, engage the glutes, press the left foot down and back, press the right knee down and forward. Maybe we stay here. Maybe we bring the hands to the back of the skull, elbows forward, press the hand, the head into the hands. Contract the front of the body. Awesome, very good. Inhale, let's release, come up right again. Got a good pop in my back there. <laughs> and let's bring our hips forward into our lunge again. So we'll go into a little lunge from here. Release the front of the hip a little bit here. And then bring your hands to the inside of the left foot. Maybe on your blocks, maybe not. Once you've got your hands down, left knee is pointing forward, we tuck the back toes and lift the back knee up. So remember, we want to engage the right thigh. Look, my instantly my right thigh just starts to hang down a little bit. So I've got to consciously bring it up, right hip up in line with the left. We 
I really strengthen my right leg and send my right heel back very strongly. And maybe you want to move forward and back here a few times as well. Option to drop the knee at any point. Send the chest forward. A lot of length in the spine here. And then we bring the right knee down. We turn the left toes out. Left knee is, right, is turning out as well. And we'll just move the entire left leg out and in. And move here so that you can see me better. External rotation, internal rotation. That's a very good way to find if there's something catching in the hips. There's some tension there. You will feel maybe a difference between both hips as well. Next time your knee falls out, leave it. Let it fall out, drop the hips. Maybe you stay on your blocks, maybe you come lower. And maybe you stay there, or maybe you pick up the back foot and grab the back foot with your left hand. And from here, do exactly what you did on the other side if you can. Either kicking the foot into the hand, opening the chest, feeling the stretch in the front of the shoulder, or lifting the hips so that your bum touches the heel, and then dropping everything down, keeping the tailbone tucked, that's intense. Stay wherever it feels intense, but not painful. There's a fine line. And release the foot. Bring your hands back down. Bring your knee back up left knee back up good let's look through towards the right side of the mat we're gonna pick up the right foot the right knee sorry and walk all the way to the right foot bend the right knee point the toes out and sit into the skandhasana or through skandhasana So now we're sitting with our right knee bent, left leg stretched out. Again, place your hands back, lift the chest, tuck, uh, don't tuck the tailbone actually, uh, stick the bum back a little bit. Okay, so we'll work again on our mobility with this right leg, with the hands back. Eventually, if you feel steady enough, you can have your hands in prayer and don't even need to uh, secure yourself, support yourself. So let's move the right knee in and out. Use your hands for support if you need to. Keep the spine long. Make yourself tall. Just move. All right. Let's that's about it come back to steady with the right knee up hands on the inside of the leg either staying upright supporting yourself maybe folding forward or leaning to the side side bend your choice press the right right foot down move the right knee away from you whatever you're doing this is the important part and the left leg is active as well come back upright inhale good we're going to move to the front of the mat again so use your hands don't use your hands let's try with that first and then use your hands bring yourself up into this low squat 
and then walking all the way forward into your lizard lunge. It takes a bit of practice, I'm not gonna lie. I didn't, I didn't do it on my first try. <laughs> okay, let's bring the right knee down and send the hips back for half splits. Oh, my blocks, yeah. Let's lift the toes, lift the chest. So we start with our windshield wiper motion, moving the toes in and out. Entire leg moves inside the hip joint. Helicopter, that's pretty cool. One of the few words I can say in German. All right, let's go back to steady. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, fold forward. And very good. Now let's bring the hands down, come back upright, bend the front knee, move the blocks to the side and come back to a downward facing dog. Place the hands down, lift the right knee, send the left foot back. All right. From here, yay. Um, See which way makes more sense for you to turn. So uh, I'm going to move my left foot forward because I want to turn then so that I can look at you. So you might want to do the same depending on how you're facing the screen. And we're coming to a forward fold here. So that's again a place where you can have your blocks under your hands with the toes pointing towards the right side of the mat, towards the long side of the mat, whichever it is you chose. You chose. Inhale to lift the chest up halfway and exhale to come down into your forward fold, wide-legged forward fold. Maybe you walk your hands back or maybe they stay under the shoulders. Press the outside edge of the feet here, engage the legs, engage, lift the kneecaps, engage the quads, lift the tailbone up, move your body weight towards your toes a little bit. Inhale to come back upright, bring your hands down, and we're going to bring our knees down now. So one knee down, two knees down. We're going to come to a frog pose. So for frog, you want to have your start in the, in the tabletop position here. Let's move your knees away from each other, keeping the feet just behind the knees. So you might just stay with the knees about this distance apart and stay there but just go as wide as feels comfortable and then your feet i'm going to show you from the side they can turn out so like a like a frog is it like a frog yes i forgot, I forgot what frog looked like so feet turn out with the toes pointing either side staying up or coming to your forearms if that feels good you can allow your hips to drop but it can be a very intense posture obviously so take it easy and find a place where you can relax a little bit keep pressing the knees down so that there's a bit of activation in the hips and just breathe you want your feet just in line with the knees so not bending the knees knees are 90 degrees You want to have something cushy under the knees, not the bare floor like I'm doing right now. We're almost there, just another three breaths here. Good. 
All right, we're gonna come back up. So carefully press your hands down, push your feet onto the mat to bring your knees closer together. Come back onto the long edge of your mat so that your hip and your mat under you. Bring your knees together and sit back into a child's pose. As you inhale, come back to a tabletop, knees under the hips, hand under the shoulders. We'll do a couple of cat cows here. Inhale to curve the spine, send the chest forward, tailbone up. Exhale to tuck the tailbone and let the head drop. Inhale and exhale. Inhale. Exhale, inhale, exhale, good, come back to neutral, cross the ankles, sit back, send your legs forward, bring your feet together and the knees apart into your version of Padakonasana. So we've got several options here with the feet nice and wide apart so that it's diamond shape with your legs the knees are 90 degrees you could stay upright or you could come forward you could be creative with the blocks so that i don't know you can rest your forehead down here if you want a medium version of balakonasana you bring the feet a little bit closer holding on to the ankles or the shins staying again upright or coming forward or maybe the feet are really close to your hips you're holding on to the hip toe mounts and you bring your body forward again or staying upright there's thousands of variations of balakonasana that you could practice make sure you choose the one that really feels Camping and good and kind of relaxing. Okay, and relax. Bring your knees back up hold them together and then lay onto your backs. Lay down. Good. Place the feet down. And we're going to bring the right knee into the chest and hug the right knee and stretch the left leg out. From here, some of us will stay here, that feels good, you bring your right knee to the chest, you just hug, or you could straighten the right leg and hold onto the back of the thigh and send the right heel to the sky. If your leg is quite high and coming towards you, you can walk your hands down the leg, maybe even massage your calf here. Or even going all the way to the foot if you're very flexible. And then let's bend the front, the right knee again, stretch the right leg and bring the left knee into the chest. Gently squeeze the knee towards you, stretch the right leg out. Again, 
stay here and keep eye here. Otherwise, stretch the left leg and move your hands to the back of the right left thigh. Send the left heel up. Take a few breaths here first. Maybe you're walking down the leg, giving yourself a bit of a massage. Even if you don't walk down the leg, you can give yourself a massage and loosen some tissues here to the back of the thigh. It's always a good idea if you're looking for more flexibility, getting massages because some tissues sometimes are stuck together because they've been stuck and tight for so long that you can stretch all you want. The tissues are so tight that they're, they're, they're glued together really. That's uh, the fascia is gluing the tissues together. So you need to break these tissues <laughs> to access them and be able to stretch. All right, let's bend the left leg again. Come back to uh, bring your feet to the mat and we'll do a quick twist before Shavasana. Any variation of the twist you want to practice, move the hips to one side and let the legs fall to the other. Stretch your arms, gaze away from your legs. Bring your knees back up, move your hips to the other side, and switch sides. Inhale to bring your legs back up. Shift your hips to the center of the mat again. Hug the knees to your chest. Give yourself a squeeze, a big hug. Inhale. And exhale, relax. Stretch your legs out. Find any comfortable Shavasana position. And let your entire body settle and soften and relax. Settle your skin, your muscles, your organs, your bones. Allow your breath to slow down.
bring the awareness back to the breath. Allow yourself a long inhale, filling up the lungs, and slowly sigh it out. Stop moving the fingers, the toes, the hands, and the feet. Swing the head from side to side. Stretch the arms up, point the toes, stretch the legs, stretch the entire body. And relax on the exhale. Let's bring the knees to the chest and gently roll to the side. And when you're ready to come up, press yourself up to a seating position again. Any comfortable position is fine. Relax the arms. Make yourself really tall. And take a moment to observe your breathing. To observe how you feel at the end of this class. To give yourself thanks for taking this time for yourself today. With your next inhale, raise the arms overhead, stretch up, and exhale, bring your hands to heart. Take a deep breath in. Oh, Shanti, Shanti. Namaste. Well done. Well done. Thank you so much for practicing with me today. I hope you enjoyed it and I felt a bit of freedom in your hips. Uh, yeah, have a lovely evening. I will see you tomorrow morning for stretching or Saturday for fitness and yoga. Thank you. See you soon.